Good evening, everyone. Um, this is Tim Rodriguez with Stand Strong Podcast, um, and I'm going to be talking about modesty today. Um, modesty is something that this world and this country as a whole is um, coming farther and farther away from. Um, they want to, the Bible says there will come a time when uh, seducers shall wax worse and worse, um, deceiving and being deceived. Um, and there's going to come a time where we start calling good evil and evil good. Um, now this all has to happen for biblical prophecy to be fulfilled and, um, us to have, um, eventually, um, the returning of the Lord Jesus Christ and us will all be called up together in one accord with our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, but in these, the Bible says, um, in the end times, parallel, er, the Bible says, a uh, perilous time shall come. Um, in these end times, and as we're getting closer and closer to the Lord's return, um, we are supposed to be stronger Christians with a um, passion and a desire to serve Jesus Christ with our whole heart. Um, not because it's something that we've been told to do, but it's because of something that we long, yearn, and want to do. Um, to serve Jesus Christ um, fully um, and to be separate, separated from the world. The Bible says, come out from among them and be ye separate. Um, so we're just going to be talking about several things today um, and most of it's going to entail um, things like that, um, modesty. Um, and then I'll also be touching on basically the... Um, general rules for discernment. Um, you know, it's not very hard to discern um, the scriptures. People just, there's been a massive falling away and people want to blur the lines and cause um, everything to be more blurred and more blurred and just um, honestly have a massive falling away. Um, so anyway, I will get into this. Sorry for my dog. Um, she's going to probably be, um, a little bit loud, <laughs> as you can tell already. Um, she tried to come up to me and, like, um, uh, trying to lick my hand and everything. She was like, give me attention. What are you doing? Um, but anyway, so... Let me get into this, and I think this is going to work out better if I just do this. Okay, so, modesty, um, and lust, it's all, um, it's all intertwined, um, modesty, discernment, and lust, um, you know, this is not a, this is a message geared toward ladies, but at the same time, it's not. Um, it is geared toward, uh, the, it is geared toward the, also the man in the home, um, just helping him understand, um, what biblical modesty is, because even some men are like, they encourage their wives to dress with a lesser standard, um, and not even realizing or maybe having not done the research themselves on why biblical modesty is so, 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 so important. Um, and sometimes I fear that men are okay with their wives dressing with a lesser standard because they want to be, they want to justify their sin um, by lusting and looking at other ladies, um, in the wrong way. Um, now I am a man. Um, every, if a man, if any man in this country told you that he never had a problem with lust, um, there's, there's something wrong with that man. Um, every man, it's, it's a daily battle that every man is going to struggle with. But if we are not in our Bibles daily, and we are not um, seeking out God's call and seeking out 
um, discernment and um, all the things that we are called. The Bible says we are called according to his purpose. Um, so we need to be seeking out these things in our lives. Um, so anyway, I'm going to jump right, right in here. Um, I'm going to strive to end here again at roughly 30 minutes, um, give or take. Um, and again, my, uh, message or podcast, um, is on modesty and how to discern modesty. So anyway, so I will get started with, um, reading something here. Um, and number one, my number one point is, um, it distracts. In modesty distracts. Um, and then I will start reading this. Eight basic tools for discernment. Many of the decisions we make are difficult. Knowing we are making the right decision can be a real challenge. We need discernment. Discernment is the ability to decide if something is good or bad. As believers, as believers slash priests, we are responsible to discern. In addition, we need to have the right sense of submission to the will of God. Too often, we are so intent on doing what we want that we do we want, we do not want anything to be an obstacle. We would rather not be confused with the facts because our mind is already made up. We need to prayerfully humble ourselves before God and submit ourselves to his truth. Furthermore, when we study thoroughly with submission to God, it is a joy to know that we are pleasing God. The following are some basic questions to ask when we are seeking um, to know if something is good or bad. These are especially helpful for things that the Bible does not directly or explicitly talk about, um, which some people believe that modesty is something um, the Bible is more, has, has a scarcer amount of scriptures on. Um, but I am going to pull as many scriptures as I can and talk about as many um, areas as I possibly can. So, um, but the Bible says, is it best? Or, or the number one tool in the eight basic tools for discernment is, is it best? Is it excellent? Or is it expedient? First Corinthians six twelve says, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Number two, does it blind? Will it enslave, be addictive, or restrict me? Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 12, Galatians 5, 16 through 23, Ephesians 5, 18. Um, but the number one verse I'll read for that is, again, 1, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 12. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Um, that's the power of immodesty, the power of drugs, the power of negative thinking, the power of anything, anything that can become a stumbling block in our Christian walk. You're, you're letting that be something that is, um, you're letting that be a power that's, um, you're letting that be a power that you are under. Um, and that is why positive thinking and, um, all these things are so important. Um, you know, I strive to, um, to teach people and try to help people understand the importance of positive thinking, um, and just living a holy, victorious, righteous Christian life. Um, wow. How many? One, two. Number three. Does it build? Is it edifying or is it destructive? 1 Corinthians 10.23 says, All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Very similar to the previous verse I read. But all th it's saying all things edify not. Um, there are things that ladies wear that are not edifying to the spirit. They're not um, saying they're not being a testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ by what they're wearing. 
um, in all honesty, they're, they're dressing in the attire of a harlot, which is something that we will get into later. Um, number four, does it boast in God? Is it exalting to God? Is, is something that you're wearing, is it exalting to God or is it exalting to this world and um, man, man's flesh and lustly desires? Um, 1 Corinthians 10 31 says, whether therefore ye eat or drink whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. It doesn't say specifics. It doesn't say this, that, or the other. It says do all to the glory of God. Um, we are called. We are called people. We are called to be a servant. We are called to be a saint. We are called to be a separated people. And when we blur the lines and when we um, say that this is okay to wear and this is okay to wear and this is okay to wear, then then at what point, at what point, do, at, at where is the line drawn? Where is the line drawn? The Bible defines the thigh as nakedness. Yet I heard a Bible-believing Baptist the other day say that it is fine for a Baptist Bible-believer Bible believing person to go to the beach wearing a bikini. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, that man is completely out of line. And if that is what he is teaching his family, I fear for the results that he will have in his children and in his heritage. Um, the Bible talks about a goodly heritage, having set up a goodly heritage. And the Bible also says, remove not the landmarks which thy ancient fathers has set up. Um, so the thing is, is, um, the thing is, is we need to be an expedient people. We need to be a people who is striving, um, to follow these different things. And not only, not only be, um, be doing these things on a, you know, church basis. We go to church, we dress one way. We're at home, we dress a different way. You're at the beach, you dress a different way. Um, let me think of the verse I was just thinking about. I was, I'm looking for that verse that I just quoted because I know that I did not, I messed. Okay, I did quote it right. Proverbs twenty two twenty eight, Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Um... I mean, I think I may have said set up, but set. Um, so I apologize for that. I just wanted to make sure I didn't uh, misquote something. Um, but yeah, so the Bible says, remove not what that um, ancient landmark which thy father have set. Um, it does not want us to tear down standards and tear down everything that is keeping us a morally separated people from the world. Um, that does not mean... Um, you know, most people think, well, you're being an over-conservative, you're over-conservativist, you're being judgmental, you're being this, that, and the other. Um, that is not the case at all. I will be one of the first people to, um, witness to anyone that comes across my way, dressed good or bad. Now, um, if I have, um, if I have a wife or a female with me, um, I would be like, hey, do you mind taking this person and talking with them and sharing the gospel with them? Um, if I have the opportunity to um, pass that along to someone else, then by all means I would. But also if someone, if someone is interested in the Bible and interested in hearing the word and hearing the plan of salvation, um, I am not going to not tell them because of maybe what they're wearing uh, but at that point, I would need to extremely be guarding my eyes and reminding myself of scriptures that the Bible says um, 
uh, whosoever lusteth after her beauty hath committed adultery already in his heart. Um, that is a serious sin. Um, lusting after a woman in your heart is a serious sin. Um, and so we need to bring that into realms and bring that into perspective. Um, you know, I've often heard the say heard the saying, um, look, but don't touch. I don't agree with that saying at all. Um, for the man and the way that our brain is wired, um, looking at a person and allowing our minds to go in places they shouldn't go, um, is very detrimental to our spiritual and Christian walk with our Lord Jesus Christ. And our number one, our personal savior. Um, and so, uh, number five, does it bring doubt? In Romans fourteen twenty three, and he that doubteth is damned if he eat because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Listen to that. That's that's an incredible thing. Does it deny self or make provisions for the flesh or an entanglement? Um, Matthew sixteen twenty four. Then saith Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny self and take up his cross and follow me. Romans thirteen fourteen. Put, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to the, to fulfill the lust thereof. Not making provisions for the flesh to fill the, fulfill the lust thereof. Um, and that brings us to our number two point. Um, number one, it deceives. And number two, it distracts. Um, dressing in a way that is not... not um, not edifying is um it deceives and it distracts um it distracts and it deceives um and then the number seven does it have the strong potential to offend um by you wearing something that is immodest knowing that you may run into a Christian or someone that is a Christian. Does it have the strong potential to offend someone? Um, you know, if um, if I run into someone from church and they're wearing um, something that is completely, you know, showing way too much skin and all that stuff, um, that may offend me. I may be like, and and it may be a stumbling block. Like, what? I never thought this person was capable of dressing like this. Remember, everyone is human. Everyone is imperfect. We are all capable of the worst. Um, but this is why we have to stay strong in these areas. That way, um, it's harder for us to um, just, you know, go down that path or the path of um, a lesser standard. Um there is what the Bible says, which is black and white. And then there are things that opinions and standards that you, as the leader of your home, um, talking about guys in general, the guys as leaders of their home in general, um, need to have set in stone. Um, but then there's also things that, as the leaders of the home, you need to set certain standards that your home is going to abide by. And you need to have sp scriptural um, references and scriptural evidence um, or passages on why you've drawn this standard. But, that, but typically a standard is something that is not specifically stated or said in the Bible. It is something that you as a family pray about you with your wife um, and set a standard in your home, whether it be music, whether it be modesty, whether it be um, many of the other things that maybe the Bible doesn't explicitly talk about. Um, and number eight. Um, oh, I didn't read the the uh, scripture portion for number seven. Does it have the strong potential to offend? Mark 9, 42 says, And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. Offending someone, and especially little ones, 
um, is a serious offense to the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, number eight, does it bring reproach? Will it assist in my Christian testimony? Second, Second Corinthians 6, 3, giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed. Romans fourteen sixteen. let not then your good be evil spoken of. Um, and that sums up that part of it. Um, but now we are going to move on to uh, this. So here's a here's a, another thing that I will be reading. Um, it is an article that um, a pastor that I'm actually familiar with um, wrote, and I thought it was very good. Um, there is one portion of the article that I will not read because it is specifically talking and geared toward his church that he pastors. Um, but <clears throat> so I will start out in this verse in Ephesians Chapter 4, Paul teaches church members to put off concerning the former conversation, conduct, and put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. There, the Lord calls believers to take up new godly standards of behavior. One such standard involves our dress. In 1 Timothy 2.9, Paul urged Timothy to teach that women adore themselves in modest apparel, here we see that the Lord cares about how we dress. Therefore, this is a topic that is most that must not be ignored. Individuals and families desiring to obey the Lord must consider what the Bible teaches regarding modest dress. It's a very important topic. Consider three biblical pr principles that should guide our dress. Number one, it is important to dress in a way that minimizes temptation for others. Ladies, this is very, very, very important. Um, dressing in a way that minimizes temptation for their men. I've often heard ladies say, well, look, if a guy looks at me with lust in his heart, that is his wrong. That is his bad. He is the one sinning. Um, I understand your point. I understand what you're saying. But it is much your fault for dressing in a way to cause him to lust as it is his fault. Um, you are both... Both parties are at fault. Um, now, if you are trying to dress in a way that's modest and adorning, adorning yourself in modest apparel and a guy is still lusting after you, and um, then his mind is in the gutter. And um, yeah, I, I don't have any patience for guys like the, that. Um, so in Matthew five twenty eight, Jesus warns that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Lust is not a small sin. Jesus equates it with adultery. Believers need to understand that immodest dress frequently causes others to lust, to sin. In First Corinthians eight nine, we are urged to avoid becoming a stumbling block to them that are weak. <coughs> and in 1 John 2.10, the Bible commands, He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Christians are called to take every reasonable step to avoid causing a fellow believer to stumble in his or her walk with Christ. Instead, the Bible repeatedly implores, us to love one another. In 1 John 4, 11, we read, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. True love involves action. One way that a believer cho may choose to demonstrate love is to avoid dressing in a manner that encourages lust. Application. Demonstrate love by avoiding clothing that draws attention to one's figure. Avoid clothing that is tight-fitting or revealing. Ladies should avoid skirts, short skirts, dresses, and tops that are low-cut or sleeveless. If you're going to err, err on the side of caution. And this is the thing that many Christians can't seem to get. Um, well, the Bible doesn't specifically say this or explicitly say this. 
Um, I understand that. But what what is wrong with erring on the side of caution? We are never going to get to have we are we are not going to get to heaven and God's not going to say um I don't agree with this this and this. You had too high of a standard. No, 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 no. The Bible says come out from among them and be ye separate. Um the I'm not going to say the higher standard that we have the better. Um, because oftentimes that causes very legalistic mindset. Um, but I am saying that have a high standard yourself and for your family. And as the head of your home, require a high standard for your wife and for your family. Um, but also show grace, love and mercy toward those that maybe have a lesser standard. Um, number two, the Bible teaches that our attire should be distinct to our gender. In Deuteronomy 22, 5, we read, The woman shall not wear that which pertain unto a man, neither shall a woman put on, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Um, I was briefly talking about this the other day. You know, um, women have... The Bibli- the only biblical definition the Bible gives for Woman's clothing is defined as a long flowing garment. Um, and most people say, well, in the olden days, guys wore robes and ladies wore robes. Um, if you look in biblical history in the Greek and Hebrew and stuff, you will and study that out. You will realize that the two were very different. Um, and also... Um, men wore breeches underneath and most often so did ladies. Um, now in wars and times like that, it was very difficult for the men to fight and be in battle with these long flowing robes. Um, so it did end up becoming a thing in Deuteronomy, I believe, um, uh, where they, uh, I could be wrong about that. I should have looked at that before I started this. But um, they took off their robes and they were fighting in breeches. But the breeches were modest and still covering their thighs and stuff. But off, there was a people groups that even had a problem with that, thinking that that was immodest and they were running around in their underwear. Um, so, But that's how far that we've come. But, you know, in this day and age... Um, you know, way back in the Bible times, it became a thing where guys were walking around in, you know, loose fitting um, uh, slacks or something that was separated um, in between each leg. Um, so that's where the whole idea of men wearing pants came from. Um, now, but now, in, in as time's gone on, we have accepted that culture for ladies. And most uh, this is the argument that I hear the most. Um, well, pants, there's, woman pa- there's women's pants. There's women's brands of pants. So I'm not sinning because I'm wearing a woman's uh, brand of pants. I understand your point. I really do. Um, but let's be careful with that standard. If you want to draw that standard for your home, okay, there's nothing that biblically states um, or explicitly says pants are a sin. But at the same time, it says woman adorning yourself in modest apparel. Um, So if your pants become too form-fitting, too showing off your figure, um, that causes a man to lust. And you need to search your heart at that point and and see if you wearing pants is going to be a stumbling block to others and make sure that you are not deciding to wear pants for the wrong reason. Um, that is why I just, the Bible, there's nothing wrong with erring on the side of caution. That is why I personally want to have this standard for my wife to wear a dress, wear a skirt. Um, <clears throat> but, I mean, how weird would it look if I started walking around in a skirt, it would look pretty weird. People would be, it would be a stumbling block to many people and people would think this is weird. And I would be like, well, this is a, 
if say I would research it and find a man's skirt, um, well, this is a man's skirt or whatever. Um, it just looks weird. Um, for instance, I know this is, I know this is, um, a culture for some people, but I used to have a college roommate who walked around in a kilt all the time. Um, I am not saying that, you know, that country, that, that's their, you know, their thing and their, but, you know, I just, it looked a little weird. I mean, it looked a little weird him walking around in a kilt all the time. Especially in the United States where that's really not a customary thing to do. Um, but, you know, and I, 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 he was one of my best friends in school. I never said anything to him about it or, um, but I, I actually, sometimes I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. But, you know, I would never walk around in a kill. I would just feel uncomfortable with that. But, um, if ever they came out with a woman's brand or a men's brand of skirt or something like that, you would never see me walking around it. To me, that's crossing the line of the whole gender thing. Um, and the Bible says, come out from among them and be separate. When most of the world is walking around in pants, if you are a Christian lady walking around in form-fitting pants like everyone else, what is separated about that? Absolutely nothing. Um, so that is why I like to err on the side of caution in that. And um, I want to have this standard for wearing dresses and skirts. Um, the Bible teaches distinct in our gen gender. In Deuteronomy 22.5, we read, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Our culture continues to fight in all-out war against this biblical principle, but God desires a clear distinction. He de desires a clear distinction between men and women. Um, uh, and the application for that is Christian ladies and gentlemen should dress in a manner that is distinct to their gender as possible. Men should avoid clothing that is feminine. I encourage ladies to wear modest skirts or dresses. I specifically discourage ladies, Christian ladies, from wearing pants, slacks, or shorts. Um, I agree with that because it can be a temptation to continue to lesser your standard to where there comes a point where you are not separated from the world. But like I said, we need to show grace where grace is given and um, give grace where it may not be given. Um, I think, um, and like I said, there's nothing in the Bible that specifically says pants is a sin. But I'm just trying to um, give you more of a biblical description on why I believe the way that I do and why modesty is so important. Um uh, number three, there's a biblical reason for ladies to wear longer dresses slash skirts. You may be surprised to learn that the Bible des defines a bare thigh as nakedness, which is something that I stated earlier. Isaiah 47, 2 through 3 says, however, that is God's perspective. As such, I encourage ladies to wear skirts. Oh, that was just a verse reference saying this is the verse that you can look up to see this. However, that is God's perspective. As such, I encourage ladies to wear dresses or skirts that are no shorter than knee length when seated. Um, because if they are shorter than knee length when seated, you will most likely see their thigh, which is defined as nakedness in the Bible. Um, is there a simple approach to dress that honors biblical principles? Yes, absolutely. Gentlemen, may honor scripture by choosing clothing that is neat and modest. Avoid clothing that is either feminine or that projects an immodest, rebellious, or worldly appearance. Avoid shorts that do not cover the thigh. And I believe that whole, I believe that with all my heart. The Bible defines the thigh is nakedness. So even though ladies are not turned, well, um, most ladies are not turned on by sight. Um, I still believe that 
Um, the guy needs to be very careful about wearing shorts that are showing um, his thigh or much too much of his leg. Um, you know, the Bible talks about, um, uh, I believe it was Peter in a boat saying that he was naked. He was not actually naked. If you look at biblical, um, go back in history and look at that, he was not actually naked, but most likely his thigh was showing. Um, and that's what that was talking about. So he threw on a robe or, um, a longer piece of apparel um, to cause himself to be more modest. I better hurry up because I'm already 35 minutes. Um, I did not realize this much material would take me this long to get through. Um, and then ladies, may honor scripture by wearing modest skirts or dresses that cover the knee when seated. They should avoid low cut necklines or any tight fitting attire. And that is where the um, caution comes in with choosing to wear pants. If you choose in your home that you're, you are going to be the leader of your home and you choose, okay, pants is okay. I'm going to allow my, I'm going to allow the ladies in my home to wear pants. If you choose that, I would, ex I would sh show, I would have extreme caution in making sure that your wife and your girls um, don't push the lines and try to wear too many form-fitting things. Oftentimes, when pants are allowed in the home, um, the lines become more and more blurred, and um, the pants become tighter and tighter and tighter and more form-fitting, which is then going um, into that whole immodesty, causing men to lust. Um, you can wear a skirt that causes men to lust as well. But that is why I read all this, because it defines skirt that is below the knees, skirt that's not showing the thigh, skirt that when you're sitting down isn't showing the thigh, um, but something that doesn't have a neckline that's um, showing anything up top, um, so or any tight-fitting apparel. Parents, please teach your children and teens to observe these biblical principles. And then here's a reference for you. Um, Deuteronomy 6-7. This article is intended to be helpful and an encouragement. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, um, you can <clears throat> contact me if you have my contact information. And I will try to even expound upon this topic a little more. I am at 37 minutes. I am running out of time. Um, my goal is no longer than 35, um, but definitely no longer than 40. <laughs> but if you know me, I can, once I get talking about topics and conversation, um, it is very easy to, to continue to talk about them. And I don't easily run out of things to say. Um, so anyway, I thank you so much for watching. I hope this was an encouragement to your heart. And why biblical standards are okay. Um, why having standards are okay. I get so tired of people who are saying that Christians with standards are legalistic. Absolutely not. If you listen to that, um, you will become more confused and you will start dropping your standards because you don't want to be considered a legalistic Christian. Um, I am a young man with many, many, many high standards um, and high standards for my future family, high standards for my wife, high sta and most importantly, high standards for myself. Um, but I cannot be a stumbling block to others and I need to show grace where maybe others have not ever been taught. Um, certain things with a biblical aspect. And that was my goal today, um, to teach modesty from a biblical viewpoint. I thank you so much for watching. And again, this is Timothy Rodriguez with Stand Strong Podcast. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you again sometime soon. Have a good day. Bye.